In this video, we're diving into a keto supplement so potent, it can make protein almost irrelevant and help patients steer clear of dialysis. Why? Because I get to answer your burning questions with the raw, unfiltered truth. We'll tackle phosphorus, one of the most dangerous toxins in kidney disease and magnesium, the underrated mineral that could be your secret weapon in a game-changing keto supplement with the potential to delay dialysis. Before we jump in, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and smash that notification bell. Then, tell every single person you make eye contact with about my videos. Alright, guys let's talk about the keto supplement that's helping some of the sickest kidney patients avoid dialysis. I just got this comment, wait, so if we take those keto supplements, does that mean we don't need protein anymore? And if so, how do we keep our muscle? Don't we need protein for strength? Fantastic question. Can a supplement really make protein unnecessary and actually help avoid dialysis? Let's break it down. First, the big claim, a keto supplement that allows stage 5 CKD patients, yes, people with almost no kidney function to safely stay off dialysis. Sounds impossible, right? But research says otherwise. In one study, stage 5 patients on a very low protein diet plus the right supplements actually lived longer than those on dialysis. Let that sink in. That's because keto analogs special amino acid supplements can replace dietary protein. In theory, you could cut protein almost completely, use these supplements, and maintain your kidney function for years. But here's the catch, it only works if you also follow a strict, well-planned renal diet. Anyone can buy the supplement. Not everyone can eat in a way that makes it effective. So yes. In the right context, protein can become optional, and dialysis can be delayed for several years. The science is there but the execution is everything. Alright, moving on. I got a really good comment on my recent video about one of the most underrated minerals in CKD treatment magnesium. This one's, how much magnesium is good for kidney health, and which magnesium form is best. Magnesium might just be the cheapest supplement that delivers real benefits for CKD patients. We're talking help with muscle cramps, high blood pressure, anxiety, inflammation, and sleep and possibly even improved insulin sensitivity. Oh, and certain forms can bind phosphate, making magnesium a sort of mineral double agent. This isn't a background player this is main character energy. But before you run off to buy a bottle, rule number one, magnesium supplements only help if you're actually deficient. Don't start dry scooping magnesium like it's pre-workout especially if you're in stage 4 or 5 CKD. Get tested first. Now, magnesium comes in what feels like 7 million forms citrate, hydroxide, aspartate, glycinate, bisglycinate, lactate, carbonate, oxide, sulfate, plus a few names only ancient druids or supplement influencers can pronounce. So, which one's right for you? Time for a quick cheat sheet. For CKD, the two most common forms are magnesium oxide and magnesium carbonate. They're cheap, effective, and in some cases, they help with phosphate binding. Are they the most bioavailable forms out there? No. But remember, doctors follow do no harm, while influencers follow don't forget to leave your credit card number. The best form for you depends on your CKD stage, your phosphorus levels, and whether you also need a laxative effect. And no, we don't usually hand CKD patients those ultra-rare, $1.80 a bottle influencer-approved powders. We stick to what works without the bonus chakra crystal in the box. We rarely recommend magnesium citrate for CKD patients even though it's absorbed better because that's actually the problem. 
Higher absorption means it needs much stricter monitoring and offers little to no phosphate binding benefit. And speaking of phosphate, fantastic question. Can you tell us how to lower phosphorus levels? Love your videos. Let's dive in because controlling phosphorus is one of the most critical steps in managing CKD. Too much phosphorus doesn't just damage your kidneys, it literally turns your arteries into stone. Not metaphorically. Actual mineral deposits. Fun? No. Dangerous? Absolutely. We have two main strategies to fight this. First, follow a plant-based renal diet. You get excess phosphorus in two ways by eating animal-based foods like meat and dairy, and by consuming additives such as phosphoric acid, sodium polyphosphate, pyrophosphate, or anything with phos in the name. But here's the twist, it's not enough to just go plant-based. You also need to watch for additives. And please ignore the outdated advice from some internet experts who tell CKD patients to avoid whole grains, nuts, and seeds because of their phosphorus content. That's like saying carrots cause bad eyesight because Bugs Bunny wears glasses. The truth? Plant-based phosphorus has low bioavailability, and these foods are so nutrient-rich that cutting them out would do more harm than good. The second strategy is phosphate binders. The most common are calcium carbonate, available over the counter, and Sevelomer, a prescription sold as Renvola or Renagel. Which one's right for you depends on your CKD stage and calcium levels. Bottom line, always test your phosphorus levels, make sure they're in range, and if they're not ask your doctor about binders. And in any case, stick to a plant-based CKD diet unless you want phosphorus to literally fossilize your arteries. Alright, moving on. Here's a question, but dark chocolate has phosphorus, and that is not good for CKD patients. Ah yes, the famous phosphorus in chocolate scare. Usually brought to you by the same crowd that thinks plants are plotting our demise and that fruit causes diabetes. Time to set the record straight. Dark chocolate gets a bad rap because someone decided that all phosphorus is evil, no matter the source. And since cocoa contains a little phosphorus, suddenly it's the villain. Because obviously the real danger to CKD patients isn't red meat or processed cheese it's the teaspoon of cocoa powder in your spinach smoothie, right? Let's check the facts. One teaspoon of cocoa powder has about 37 milligrams of phosphorus. You don't even need a full tablespoon to get the antioxidant benefits dark cocoa is so nutrient dense that a couple teaspoons are plenty. And here's the kicker, plant-based phosphorus isn't absorbed well, so you're only taking in maybe 10 milligrams tops. Honestly, you probably absorb more phosphorus just thinking about a rack of ribs. So yes, technically dark chocolate contains some phosphorus. But in moderation, it's nothing to worry about. I do still recommend keeping portions reasonable, since cocoa also has calories, potassium, and a bit of protein. But here's the bottom line, a tablespoon of cocoa in a smoothie? Not only is it safe it's beneficial. Cocoa is loaded with flavonoids and polyphenol that support your kidneys, blood vessels, heart, and maybe even your mood. Next question comes, and it's an important one, what about Tylenol? Is that not good for the kidneys too? Great question, because most painkillers are risky for CKD patients, especially NSAIDs like ibuprofen, naproxen, and aspirin. These are well-known kidney offenders and should be avoided completely. But of course, people don't take NSAIDs for fun they take them because they're in pain. So what's a safer option if you have kidney problems? Enter Tylenol, also known as paracetamol. Notice I said safer, not safe. Tylenol is processed by the liver rather than the kidneys, 
which makes it less harmful for kidney patients. However, research still links long-term or high-dose use to some kidney damage. The takeaway, occasional, low-dose Tylenol use is generally acceptable, but daily or high doses over time can still cause harm. So, avoid NSAIDs entirely, use Tylenol sparingly, and always follow your doctor's advice when it comes to pain relief. Alright, moving on. Here's an excellent question. What if BUN is okay, but protein in urine is high? Great question, let's break this down. Both proteinuria, protein in urine, and elevated BUN, blood urea nitrogen, are signs of kidney damage, but they tend to show up at different stages. BUN measures the amount of nitrogen in your blood, a warning signal that often means someone with CKD is eating too much protein. Proteinuria, on the other hand, means your kidneys are leaking protein into the urine. Now, both can be reduced by lowering protein intake. But here's where many people go wrong they think if BUN is normal, it's too early to start a low-protein diet. Not true. In fact, it's common to have high proteinuria while BUN is still in range, and sometimes even before your GFR starts to drop. Protein in urine is often the first visible sign of kidney damage. So what's the right move? Wait until kidney function crashes and all your labs, BUN, phosphorus, potassium, bicarbonate are high. Or take action now while the damage is still manageable. The answer is simple, prevention beats cure every time especially with a progressive, incurable condition like CKD. If you have proteinuria, don't wait. Start addressing it immediately, cut back on protein, investigate the cause, and work with your doctor to protect your kidneys before things get worse. Alright, since we're on the topic of diet, here's another important question. My GFR is 21%. I have high uric acid and high blood sugar. What foods can you suggest? Designing a diet for someone with both advanced CKD and diabetes is no simple task not just because of the complexity, but because the scientific community is still debating the best approach. The big controversy? Protein. For CKD patients, a low-protein diet cutting out high-protein foods like meat, fish, dairy, and even legumes can slow progression dramatically. But for people with diabetes without CKD, protein may actually help protect the kidneys. So which is it if you have both conditions? Recently, a team of researchers and doctors from Italy tackled this exact question in a groundbreaking study. Their findings challenge a lot of conventional thinking and could finally give diabetic CKD patients a clear, science-backed answer on what to eat. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, and God bless you all. See you next time.